Uh, China is a very important market, obviously not only for the watch industry, but for the luxury world in general. And for us, it's very important to make sure that the message we communicate in China is being understood very clearly and it's being also localized in the meaning of the year of the message on the product. So for instance, we've taken a couple of actions with Elise Narda and Gerard Perego, making sure all teams in China are locals. Uh, they're based now in Shanghai, when usually most of the uh, luxury uh, maisons are based in Hong Kong. And we want to make sure that we've got a deep understanding of the, uh, of the consumer, because it's a fast-changing market, very prompt to adopt uh, new behaviors, uh, new consumer habits. And you just opened a new flagship in Shanghai hein, for Ulysse Nardin. Correct. We just opened in Shanghai now uh, a flagship. We are about to open a, a new one in, in a week in, uh, in Beijing, as well in prime location. And we have also several requests to open franchise store in the rest of the country. But we want to make sure we remain very exclusive in China, the same way we're exclusive in the rest of our distribution worldwide. And it's true also for GR Perigo. And China has been changing so much lately. What type of consumer demand are you seeing uh, emanating from China? We see some major shift in China. And I would say from a, a country that used to have a conservative taste. I mean, a consumer used to buy watches, for instance, that were sort of flat and gold. Now there is a very fast evolution toward more sporty product. Uh, that's one trend. Also in China, uh, I believe we, not, uh, we start not, uh, to see now uh, customers also uh, being trendsetters. Uh, much more than followers. And they are eager to move away from mass luxury brands. And it's true in watches, but the same it's true also in some other areas of the uh, luxury, uh, to more specialized, more genuine and authentic uh, brands, such as Ulysse Narda. That's really interesting. So more Chinese trendsetters than followers. Definitely, definitely. And, and every trip to China, and I tend to go there uh, every two months, uh, plus communicating with our team very regularly, that's something I measure. And it's very exciting because you want to make sure that while we remain very true to who we are as a brand, with our history and the stories we tell globally, we also bring a flavor that is being understood by trendy, um, edgy consumers, especially younger ones. What about younger ones indeed? Yeah, the younger, it's, it's very interesting, probably the average age of, the, uh, of our Chinese consumer is younger than in the rest of the world. Um, there is no hesitation in China, in particular, and Chinese consumer overall worldwide, to go and buy product that could be seen as uh, more uh, expensive to the rest of the world. And that makes it very, very exciting. Because you want to make, I think people want to just enjoy the moment, and they also want to make sure that they are, there is a uh, a level of excitement which is very high. I think the word excitement and desirability is probably the most important one.